Recent studies using the diabetes drug semaglutide or a GLP-1 agonist have shown it could be a blockbuster drug for weight loss. Weight loss drugs have had a, such a complicated history with not working very well, having significant side effects, and really have not showing great long-term success. But now this GLP-1 agonist is being hailed as probably the best weight loss drug we've ever had in terms of efficacy and safety. But where does this drug or where do drugs in general fit into the overall concept of long-term weight loss? Is it a crutch that people have to use forever? Is it something to get you kick-started on your progress that then you can go on your own? Or is it like treating any disease and using a medication is really no big deal if it gets you the benefits you want? These are questions that are very hard to answer and pretty individualized. But now a new study is going to help us see a little bit about the need for continuing medication in certain circumstances. And we're gonna see how that might apply to you and what other options exist. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this is an important topic because let's face it, you know, there are millions and millions of people in this world looking to lose weight. And the question is, how do I lose weight in a healthy way and in a sustainable way in a way that fits into my lifestyle that I can enjoy. Semaglutide, this GLP-1 agonist, has really burst onto the scene with trials in the New England Journal of Medicine and in Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, showing that you can lose up to 15% of your weight by using this medication without really many other dramatic interventions. We know other options exist, whether it's you know nutrition and exercise or whether it's weight loss surgery. So where do the drugs fit into this whole picture? Well. We have a new study now in JAMA Network. What they looked at was they had patients taking the semaglutide once weekly injection. They treated them for 20 weeks. And then at that point, they randomized them to continue the injection or to go on a placebo. And potentially not very surprising, uh, there was a, a, a divergence in the progress of how they did, whether they stayed on the medication or whether they went on placebo. So what they found was in that 20 week period, they all averaged about 10% body weight loss. But then once they switched, those who stayed on the injection from week 20 to week 68, they continued to lose another 8% of their body weight. But those who went on placebo gained about 7% of their body weight back so that their total was only about a 3% weight loss at that point. Now, Here's the thing though, they said this was all done with lifestyle interventions. And this actually highlights a problem about lifestyle interventions in trials. You go down to the methods section of this trial, what they say is all participants received a lifestyle intervention from week zero to week 68, including monthly counseling by qualified healthcare professionals in person or by telephone. Participants were prescribed a reduced calorie diet, 500 kilocalorie deficit, relative to estimated energy expenditure and increased physical activity to 150 minutes a week recorded daily by participants. Now, they don't tell you anything else. There's no documentation of what they were actually eating, how much, what their macronutrients were, what type of exercise they were doing. It's all just sort of left generic and they don't explain anything. And this is part of the problem. It's, it's sort of taking the approach that, well, all lifestyle interventions are equivalent, right? Any diet that reduces calories, any exercise that just increases your time exercising is all the same. And we know that's actually not true. So this is one of the problems when interpreting a study like this, because you can say, well, you need to stay on this medication, right? One conclusion from the study would be, you have to stay on this medication to continue your weight loss, because as soon as you stop, you gain weight. Well, that's true within the context of this trial. So what if you are engaging in a weight loss program, in a nutritional and exercise program that is similar to, I don't know, you could say the Verta Health studies where they show at two years, patients are losing 10% of their body weight just with a nutritional intervention. Or the studies showing that low carb and ketogenic diets are very successful in helping people lose weight. Or the studies that show high protein diets are very helpful in helping people lose weight. And resistance training plus some aerobic training helps people maintain weight loss and maintain body composition. So the key is 
focusing on what are the most effective lifestyle intervention. And that's what a lot of these trials sort of lack, I think, that they don't specify or they're testing the wrong thing. They're just testing strict calorie restriction no matter how you achieve it. So that's where we need a little caution. So let's get back to what I asked in the beginning of this video. What is the role of these drugs for long-term weight loss? Well, I still see it as a great way to get people started who are having a hard time maintaining a lifestyle that helps them lose weight or who have literally tried everything and not losing weight. But we have to define that try everything. Traditional medical teaching does not include a ketogenic diet or a high protein diet as trying everything. And I think we definitely need to include those. And those can be used in conjunction with medications. Then if you want to get off the medications, you have to make sure that your lifestyle is on point and helping you continue to either lose weight or maintain weight and not be a generic, reduce your calories, increase your exercise, everything in moderation, do whatever you want, because we know that for the majority of people, that advice doesn't work. It's hard to follow the advice, and that's probably a big reason why it doesn't work. But also following the advice probably doesn't work as well as other better advice, whether that's a low carb or keto diet, whether that's a higher protein diet, finding ways to improve your satiety so you naturally decrease caloric intake. So the medications have a role, absolutely. And obesity can be a lifelong disease that needs to be treated lifelong. But the number one treatment is still lifestyle intervention using medication as an adjunct when needed, and hopefully not for lifelong, but hopefully helping people transition to a lifestyle because obesity tends to be more of a lifestyle disease that can be treated with lifestyle, not in all circumstances. I acknowledge that some people are going to struggle no matter what they try, and that's when medications can have a huge role. But I think we need to put them in their place, and this study shows that if you're not following the right lifestyle for you, that medications are gonna be a lifelong commitment. And that's not the end of the world. If that's gonna help you be healthier, that's okay. But we have to balance that with the cost and with the side effects um, and with what your other options are. Maybe this was a little philosophical. Hopefully it helps you put things into perspective, helps you put the study into perspective and the role of weight loss medications. So if this was helpful, please click the like button and subscribe button down below. Leave a comment. That way you will get more feedback on all of our future DD News videos and your participation helps others see it and hopefully it can help them as well. All right, I'd really like to know what you think about this because I know it is kind of controversial. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on DD News on YouTube.